Hey there, Capricorn. Welcome to your reading for uh, mid-October 2024. You have this Aquarius card that says Rebellion. It says, think outside the box and stretch the boundaries of what could be. You have a shooting star. It says, what you've asked for is coming true. Uh, your wish is about to manifest. So, uh, love that, Capricorn. I think it's about time. Um, you know, you should start feeling better, as I've been saying, um, just because, you know, Pluto is going to be leaving your sign, which is great. And, you know, I think that it's going to be definitely a good a good thing for you. Um, but you start with the King of Pentacles here, and the King of Pentacles is coming up in your current general energies. And so the King of Pentacles can represent thinking about like wealth or thinking about building something long term. And, you know, I think that that is probably what's on your mind is, you know, building things that that last. You even have the Eight of Pentacles in your past position. And so the Eight of Pentacles can represent, um, you know, kind of like work that you've already done or receive, you know, I, I say it's a card of material success on the horizon. So meaning you've done a bunch of work and, you know, it's kind of leading to a result in the future. Uh, but the good news is, is that it's coming up in your past. So that could represent you uh, getting rewards for something that you've done in the past. And the King of Pentacles definitely kind of like furthers that message. Uh, you know, I kind of feel a little bit of a reserved energy on this King of Pentacles in your reading. You know, even though the King of Pentacles represents represents Taurus. I feel like the King of Pentacles is how you are presenting in this reading, Capricorn. So I kind of just feel that this is you showing up in this position, which is good uh, because it kind of puts you in a position of power and strength. But I would say that like, um, you know, I would open up or something, you know, because I, I get like a little bit too much of a reserved energy. It's like, like, mm, you know, imagine if you were Einstein, right? <laughs> and imagine if you never shared, you know, E equals MC squared. You know, it's almost like that's what I'm getting. It's like you're a genius at something, but it's like you're not sharing it is almost the feeling that I get off of this card. But it's like you're never going to know that you're a genius at doing something unless you do it. And so I kind of feel this energy for Capricorn of needing to, you know, unleash the beast. I think I've said that to you in past readings that you really have to, um, you know, show the world what you're made of, which I've also said in past readings. And this seems to be a focus for you. I, I think that you know, the Pluto and Capricorn punishments have, have uh, may, maybe made you hold back or, you know, has have kind of created something inside of you that is making you hold back. And I feel it's time to kind of reveal who you are. And, you know, this, your crossing energy, which is the High Priestess, kind of furthers that message. The High Priestess, she is, you know, about mysteries and secrets. There is a theory that she has her back to the world. So she's sitting outside the Temple of Solomon. And, um, you know, again, we don't really know, and it's just a theory, but, you know, there's a theory that she has kind of shut herself out from the world, um, not for anything really bad. She's doing it so that she can listen to her intuition or so that she can gain some inner answers. She's also trying to imagine her future as well. She has these, uh, these three stages of the moon on her crown here. And it kind of represents the fact that she visualizes how she wants her life to go. and But she's not necessarily doing it intuitively. She's kind of more just using her powers of visualization to visualize her future. Uh, but she, again, she is in isolation. So I think that these first two cards are encouraging you to come out of isolation. You also have the Nine of Swords in the area of what's on your mind. The Nine of Swords is Groundhog's Day. You know, this is my Groundhog's Day card, just like, you know, experiencing the same thing over and over and over again. And so this is probably a fear that you are having where uh, you could be fearing that things are just always going to be the same. You know, it's coming up in the area of your thoughts. So this is just what you are thinking is that things are going to be stuck on re repeat and that you're just going to keep, uh, that your life is going to never change. Uh, but with the Nine of Swords, we have to take control. The, there is this comfort blanket right here. And this blanket has all these astrological symbols all over it. And those astrological symbols should provide him with comfort because it kind of represents all the things that he has been through. Like, you know, the astrological, tra each transit has taught him something and it should give you comfort to move forward because it, it's like saying, you know, no, you're not stuck. You have learned from all these things and now you can move forward. So I feel like you need to kind of look at everything you've learned and, and move forward. The other thing is, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I don't think it's that bad, but we'll see. Um, you know, the whole reading is 
actually really positive, but you do go from the Nine of Swords to the Tower. The I consider the Nine of Swords to be the worst card in the tarot. Uh, to me, the Tower is actually not that bad, but one thing I will say is that, you know, it is my tarot rule that if you don't get out of bed on the Nine of Swords, that it will you will have a Tower moment. Uh, sometimes I think Tower moments happen to, to cause a shakeup so that we get out of bed. <laughs> not literally, although it could be literally for some of you, but it could also be more figuratively as well. And so what I would say here, is that this hasn't happened yet, right? People always say to me, like, how can you say this is a good reading with the tower? I'm like, well, you're watching this before it's happened. The point of tarot is not to say this is gonna happen. It's it's, it's to say work with this energy so that you can this doesn't happen, right? And that's what we're gonna talk about with the tower. But I also wanna see, we're gonna clarify the reading and we'll see what comes up. In the area of your foundation, you have the lovers. Uh, the lovers could be love coming in for you. I don't really see this as a love reading yet. That could change in a minute, but you know, this could be love, but this could also just be you uh, picking a new path. Uh, sometimes I think the lovers can just say that you're at a crossroads in your life and you have a choice to make. Uh, this is your higher self angel right here, and your higher self angel is trying to guide you uh, in a new direction. So I feel for a lot of you uh, that you could just be moving in new directions. In the area of your past, this is the energy that you're moving past. You have the strength card and this protection card. I feel like you've de developed a lot of strength. Um, you know, it's like all your work, the Eight of Pentacles, I feel like it's saying you, like your work was not for nothing. <laughs> I feel like the Eight of Pentacles, which we're going to talk about in a second, is saying like all this work is going to pay off in the future. Like you didn't do, you didn't work on yourself and you didn't work on your business or whatever you're working on for nothing. You know, it's all adding up to something. And, you know, I feel like this is kind of protected at this time. Again, you have the Eight of Pentacles. He's been mastering a craft. And like I said at the beginning of the reading, uh, you know, this is a card of material success on the horizon. And so there could be some pleasant, you know, the tower could also be pleasant surprises or changes that you're making because you've done the work, because you've put a lot of work into, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to create in your life. And so, you know, like part of me feels like this is saying continue to work, even though it's coming up in your past, it's like saying keep going. And I, I'm pretty sure I've said to you before in past readings to keep the momentum going. And you do have the Eight of Wands. The Eight of Wands would kind of say the same thing, like keep the momentum uh, flowing forward. And I think that would be a good idea for you. The other thing I would say is that you have this rebellion card, which says think outside the box. I, I do feel a lot of you are kind of like working on things that maybe no one has ever seen before. And may, I kind of feel that maybe part of the problem here is, is that there's nothing to compare uh, your life to, right? And so I think as humans, we look for confirmation that we're on the right path. But maybe, but if there is no confirmation, if you're the trailblazer here, which is what this is kind of saying, then there is no confirmation, right? Uh, next, in the area of your very near future, you have this diving beetle card. It says slow movement, creative force, water element. You have this crown safaka. It says femininity, attentiveness, and group accord. So uh, there you go. You know, that card says group accord, you know, meaning uh, be, live, being together with a group and getting that group confirmation, which there probably isn't any uh, group confirmation for you right now. Uh, if you are working on any new projects, uh, I'm pretty sure I've said this to you before as well that, you know, really, I don't think you can just dip your toes in the water. I feel like you have to make that like you have to dive deep. You have to go all in on whatever it is that you're trying to create. I think that this year, the end of the year, there's less than three months left. Like if you pick one thing and make it happen, you will make it happen. But you have to be fully committed to that one thing. And it could, it could be anything, whatever it is that you want to accomplish. So I would make that, you know, deep commitment. Uh, again, in the very near future, you have the tower. The tower is a card of seeing reality um, and, you know, kind of seeing the reality of a situation. I kind of wonder if you're creating a tower moment. You know, this guy here, he's, you know, diving out head first. He has made the choice to have a tower moment. He realizes that the tower is collapsing. The other person is like, oh my God, I have no clue what's going on here, even though the tower is on fire. And so I kind of feel like you have a choice um, and, you know, maybe some of you are leaving something behind or uh, leaving a group or a business or career. And so again, I don't really feel this tower has to be a bad thing. One thing I will say is that, you know, if you've been thinking about making a move here, going this way, that if you don't make the move, I feel like the, the, the tower is going to make it happen for you. So sometimes I think like we think, okay, like my job isn't working out anymore, but maybe I should go some, go get something else. And you know, the ta nine of swords to tower can say like, well, you've been thinking about it. You've been thinking about making this change. And if you don't, the universe is going to make the change for you. So, you know, again, if you've been thinking about it, I would make a change.
Uh, next in your outcome row, you have this request card and this ponder card. You've been thinking about something. You've been pondering something is what that ponder card says. And this could be a request. Maybe you've asked the universe for something. Even in the area of your next few months, you have the eight of wands. And the eight of wands is like quick success or a quick conclusion. Um, but, you know, I look at the eight of wands as a, a request. Uh, it is, you know, traditionally, this card represented the arrows of love, meaning you tell the universe what you want in love and the universe responds based off of like what you've been, the, the vibes that you've been given off. But I, I think that this can be the arrows of anything. You've been asking the universe in some way uh, to bring something to you and now the universe is responding. It's also a pretty good card to have after the tower because it would say that, you know, if you have had a tower moment or if you are having a tower moment right now, uh, that there will be a quick change. It's also an amazing card for momentum, which is probably, you know, a key word for you here, Capricorn, is momentum, <laughs> for sure. In the area of your closest relationships, you have the Six of Wands, which is awesome. The Six of Wands is being celebrated by other people, and again, it's coming up in the area of your closest relationships. So again, I feel like you will be celebrated. And, you know, the other thing is, is if you are doing something like creating a tower moment, Sometimes like leaving a job can create a tower moment for the business that we're leaving. Uh, or if you're making a decision that other people disagree with, uh, this says that in the future, people will see that you were right. So like I said, there's a little bit of this trailblazer energy going on in this reading where it's like saying that you are the one that's blazing a trail and maybe for the future, meaning for people in the future, like you are the one that is going to become an example for other people. And again, I think during Pluto and Aquarius, which, you know, in November, Pluto goes into Aquarius, that's like the most spiritual thing we can do is be an example for others. Uh, you have this strength card coming up in the area of your future feelings. So I, uh, I kind of feel like you're appreciating yourself more with the strength card in a funny way. I feel that you're feeling, you know, it's like you're feeling, you are actually feeling strong. I feel like you are kind of feeling happy because you have done things that have required great strength. And, you know, this is causing you to believe in yourself more, which is what the strength card is all about. You know, this lion represents her inner voice or her inner critic. Uh, but the lion is submitting to her. The lion is now, like, she is in control of the lion. So a, a lot of you are kind of, like, taking control over your inner voice and, you know, the things that are going on inside of you. Uh, your outcome is the sun, which is amazing. So the sun is the best card in the tarot, makes the whole entire reading more positive. This is why I wouldn't even worry about that tower because you have the sun. So the sun is, like, ultimate happiness, joy, uh, peace, you know, positive energy, good things, uh, good things going on for you there, uh, Capricorn. So uh, we're going to clarify through here and uh, get some more details. Uh, with the um, King of Pentacles and the High Priestess, you have the star, which is great. You know, this could represent healing or overcoming a tower moment. Uh, this this is exactly what we want to see in a reading with the tower is the star because it comes up after the tower. And the star could also represent you. You know, it's kind of like saying there's a light shining on you at this time. Remember at the beginning of the reading, we said that the King of Pentacles is probably just you, like your energy. And the star, we have the sun and the, the sun and the star, which is like fame and fortune. So definitely a lot of recognition for you, which I again, I think has been a pretty common uh, message for you. With the Nine of Swords, you have the Four of Cups. Like, I'm wondering if the, the Tower is saying you need to accept something into your life. You know, the Four of Cups, uh, I love this Four of Cups. This is from the White Sage Tarot, and you can see these three cups pouring into one cup. Normally, the Four of Cups is like there's a hand reaching out with a cup to the guy who's sitting on the ground. He's got those three cups in front of him, and he's not accepting an offer. So if there is an offer that's coming in for you, it could be any type of offer. It could be a surprise offer as well with the tower here, um, you know, the four cups would say this is an offer you will want to accept. And again, of course, you know, don't force yourself to do anything you don't want to do. But, you know, I kind of feel like this is something you've asked for. So I would accept it with that tower. You know, the tower could say if you don't accept it, you're not going to get it. With the lovers, you have the two wands and the four wands. So the four wands can, of course, represent marriage. If you have love in your life right now, uh, it could lead to marriage. Some of you could be attracting a person in the future with the two wands as well that could lead to marriage. The two wands is a card of like progress and the future. It's also about leaving behind a comfort zone, which the nine of swords represents needing to leave a comfort zone as well. So I think that for a lot of you, this could be like new love that's coming in for you. And the two of wands could say that you have to like take the lead in some way. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to like take the lead 
need in the relationship. It just means that maybe you have to leave a comfort zone and go out on a date with a person, or maybe you have to uh, put yourself on Tinder or something to find a person in the first place. You know, the two of wands, we, ha we usually have to grease the wheels with the two of wands. We have to do something to get it. And so I would, you know, don't be afraid to like take the, you know, take the lead here by doing something. Uh, with the eight of pentacles, you have the fool. You've been, whatever you've been working on for a long time, uh, I feel like it's time to, you know, show the world what you're made of the, in that area of your life. Like if you've been mastering a craft or if you've been learning a skill, I feel like the fool is saying it's time for you to take a leap of faith and uh, put that skill on display, you know, sun and the star. So there's clearly a skill that you have that you need to display to the world. And uh, if you do it, I think you'll be very happy. Uh, with the tower, you have the Knight of Cups. Again, it could be, the tower does not have to be a bad thing. The tower could be like a knight in shining armor. It could be, you know, a sudden, uh, a person suddenly approaching you or uh, uh, you finding out that a person is interested in you or something like that. So, you know, again, if you've been asking for love, this could definitely be um, that person coming in for you or a person approaching you. The Knight of Cups can also be your dream. You know, normally he's like looking into that cup. He's dreaming of his future. And the Knight of Cups, he has that water flowing in front of him but he's in the desert and he, all he has to do is plant seeds in that wa in, in that water and or in front of the water and the seeds will grow with the eight of wands you have two cards again you have the sun again <laughs> and the queen of wands so very positive uh the sun of course is ultimate happiness joy you know good things coming in for you the queen of wands is about moving forward without knowing the details which i definitely feel is a little bit of a trick for you capricorn like we said, uh, there is nothing to compare yourself to. Queen of Wands is literally the card of learning as you go. So whatever your goal is right now or whatever you're trying to do in your life, you're going to have to learn as you go. And there is you're just going to have to be comfortable with the fact that there is no nothing to compare what you are creating too, you know, or especially if you're like accomplishing, trying to accomplish a big goal. It's like the way that you're doing it is not how other people do it. You know, all these, the Aquarius card says, whatever you're doing, you're going to be doing in a very unique way. And I feel that that should give you comfort because you're probably going to stand out with all these cards of standing out. Uh, with the six of wands in the area of your closest relationships, you have the magician, the magician says you have attracted all this attention, so you could be getting just a lot of attention right now. And it, um, you know, again, the, the this area of the reading represents all of your connections. So this could be a love, it could be in business, it could be in groups of people, whatever. And so you're like attracting a lot of attention. I always point pull the card that the magician is pointing to. We're gonna say it's this one, uh, this one right here. You have the skunk card. It says conflict avoidance, discretion, and lunar energy. Uh, the skunk is also a card of being very confident in yourself so you know again i feel like the more confident you are the more confident people will be in like following you or whatever the case may be uh, with the strength card you have the hermit uh again um i literally said something about your inner strength or you know you, you being very happy with yourself you know the hermit has been on a long journey and has gone through a dark night of the soul to find his inner light and so I definitely feel I, that th this to me is major confirmation for what I said on the strength card that you are kind of you know, it's like, it's almost like you're pleased with the work that you've done on yourself, or, you know, maybe you're, maybe you are finally seeing that all the work was worth it. Like I said, on the, um, you know, with the star card and the Aquarius card and like the eight of pentacles in your past, uh, you know, I feel like you're happy with the work that you have done. He has a star normally in his lantern and he needs to shine that star bright. You know, you know, you know what they say, if you got it, flaunt it, right? So if there are opportunities this month, uh, I would say for the rest of the year, I would say for the next couple of years, if there are opportunities for you to brag about yourself or, um, you know, to talk about yourself. As long as you're doing it in a positive way, I think it will get you positive attention. With the sun, you have the devil. Uh, the devil could just be you showing up here. You know, the devil is showing up with the sun, which would be more positive. And I feel that the devil could just be talking about your energy. It's like you're standing out. You are getting attention. Uh, you have this wedge card. It says someone is trying to come between you and a friend or something that you want. Uh, everybody has been pretty much getting this stuff this year. You know, again, if you're dealing with a new person or if you're meeting a new person, especially in love, I would be careful who you allow to get in between you and them. And, you know, th this card always gives me the vibes of like get getting with a person and then, you know, their ex messages you and tells you some lie, right? So, you know, I would be careful who you're allowing to do to, to give you information about anyone or anything. 
Uh, you have this career card, uh, definitely uh, growing in your career if you have a career or even your business. I think that Eight of Pentacles is just saying your hard work is finally paying off. A lot of your readings over the past couple of years have been saying that you're getting to this point where your hard work is paying off. I really feel it's more, I, like I don't know if that's the right words though because for you Capricorn, I feel like it's more like you feel that um, everything is worth it. So like you've been doing a lot of work and for years with the Eight of Pentacles and I feel like it's saying that moving forward, you know, probably as we move throughout the rest of the year, you're going to feel, you're going to start to see the clues that what you have learned is paying off. I hope that makes sense, but that's kind of what I get there. Now you have this love card, definitely could be love coming in for you. Could be a surprise with the tower. So if you want a connection, uh, definitely could be like a knight in shining armor uh, coming in for you here. Uh, you have this finger, it says, warning you of a problem either now or in the future. I feel like this should say don't ignore problems. <laughs> so if there are things, issues that pop up in any area of your life, I feel like the, f the, the faster you take care of them, the better. Like I would, don't ignore your issues or, you know, things that you deal with. Um, make sure you take care of them quickly. Uh, you have this rainbow card that says, the most difficult part of a situation is over. You can't make that up, Capricorn. Uh, literally, the whole entire reading basically says this, that you are you know, getting past the major challenges. We will always have challenges in life, but you know, I think you're, the most difficult part of the challenges is coming to an end. So love it, Capricorn. Really good reading. Thank you for being here, and definitely enjoy your month.